Why am I so nervous about being able to afford college? Video, please. Pardon me. Four point oh, three point oh. They went to the Ivy League high schools. Came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. That's why I wake up every morning at 2 o'clock, 2.30. Because I got my mama counting on me. I got my sister counting on me. I got my son and my daughter counting on me. I got a world that gets up every morning and watches me. Stop being in high school dropout. Stop giving up. Stop sweeping on the street. Stop walking up and down Finko Avenue like you ain't got nothing and get your GED. Stop being afraid to take a test. Stop being afraid to go to college because your daddy didn't go and your mama didn't go. I don't do well with math. You're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good at writing, because you have never written before. You can't get to a writing class, and you got tutor after tutor, resource after resource. The problem is, you ain't never felt no pain before you saw. It's a soft generation. You quit on everything. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more plans. If you have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is study. Okay, so I'm trying to motivate you guys to go to college, especially the underclassmen. So, um, in 2007, 27.4% of blacks and 26.6% of Hispanics were poor, compared to 9.9% of non-Hispanics whites. So if we're poor, minorities are poor, how are we able to afford college? No. And wait, 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 go back. If, if you see in this room, it's just all white people. We need to change that. So my story. Um, when I was young, my parents were together, and we were, I guess, upper class. And I, I felt like I had everything. And then one day, my, my dad was like, hey, I want to move to Florida. But my, all my family was here. My mom was like, I don't want to go, but she had to go for the sake of their marriage. And then um, we went to Florida. There were some cousins there. My mom was not happy. We um, came back to Chicago, my mom and I. My dad was like, uh, I'll see you guys in Chicago in a, a year. Uh, I got to sell all the stuff that we bought here and that he bought with my mom's credit card. So, next slide. Um, my dad went to Mexico. He remarried while he was still, still married to my wife. I mean, my. <laughs> <laughs> While he was still married to my mom, and um, he didn't come back until two and a half years later, but he already had someone. And in the meantime, me and my mom were super poor. My, before, when, we, when they were married, my mom and my dad, my mom had a job for 10 years, but then um, when we came back, we were homeless. We had to live with my grandma. We were on food stamps, all that, and my mom didn't get a job until around two years later. And um, finally, she's back on track. So... Next slide. Um, yeah, I can't explain that. That's my mom. And um, so I feel like I experienced every social class. I was upper, then I was lower. Now I feel like I'm in the middle. But the point is, no matter where you come from, if you can see, like, I managed to get posse, even though my mom, she has a drinking problem and an anger problem due to the separation. So being at home isn't necessarily so fun, but I, I still like fight through every day. I, I put a smile on my face every day and keep going. So if I could do it, I think any of you can do it. Um, so I interviewed um, a, my posse trainer, Elizabeth Gutierrez, and my aunt, Veronica Contreras. They taught me these three things that everyone should keep in mind. Be vulnerable, be honest, and be pushy. Elizabeth, um, she's, 
she came from an undocumented family. She was the first time citizen. And um, she called colleges, spent hours calling until she got enough aid and she ended up going to school for free. But she told them their story. She told them where she came from, her family situation. And same thing with my Aunt Veronica Contreras. She ended up only paying $2,000, which I thought was amazing until it's not as amazing because she told me the tuition cost at UIC was $2,000 when she went to college. But she still fought through even though her parents had no money. I also interviewed some upper class people. That's Jason Horowitz and that's on the left side, my cousin. And they didn't have to pay anything for college. So I concluded um, that the rich do not have to worry about paying for college while the poor have the most anxiety towards it. Um, so, the bad things about college. College is expensive. So public schools cost $23,400 on average, total cost, and private $46,272. And um, based off past generations, we see um, adults that are still in debt to like 20 years after they graduate, and that scares this generation students, so we don't think college is worth it. However, college is worth it. The medium salary for bachelor's degree is $46,900, high school $30,000, dropouts only pay $22,900, while the unemployment rates are for bachelor's degree 7%, high school 17.5, and dropout 29.2. So, my solution. You have to be self-motivated. If you don't want to go to college, if you don't have the mindset of going to college, you're not going to go. It, as no matter how much someone pushes you, you yourself have to believe that you have the potential to succeed. Um, you have to be academically successful from freshman year. Like, every year counts, because it's a cumulative GPA. The better your GPA and scores, the more age you get. And um, you have to be persistent, like the example of Elizabeth, that she called colleges to get fill her gap. And um, if you don't necessarily do as well as you wish you could in school, then you can apply to safety schools, and these are the three most important, but these are two. Safety schools, because they want someone that's slightly above their GPA and ACT, so they will give you more aid. And applying scholarships. Scholarships are very difficult to get, but uh, I recommend applying to institutional scholarships and scholarships from organizations that you're a part of, because national scholarships are really competitive. Um, my mom, she saved money since I was born, and she saved up $40,000 in my lifetime, which is very helpful for paying to college. So maybe in like next generation, your kids, like you should save up. But when you save money, put it in, um, put it in a bank account that's not like a close family member. Put it like in an aunt's bank account. So it's kind of like tricking the system. Like since you're, um, since you're, um, they don't look at your aunt's bank account where you have forty thousand dollars that you have saved up for college, and that's that. And, Colleges don't take that into account, and um, that's what my mom did. Um, so if, if you just if you just struggle with school, uh, another option is going to community college for the first two years. Then, like transferring credits, but what you have to do is make sure that the college that you want to transfer to accepts the credits, or else you're kind of messed up in that situation. Um, believe in the investment. College is a process. It's not. It's not, oh, four years and like, I'm supposed to succeed right away. I'm not, sh I shouldn't have debt. Like, debt is okay. You'll pay it off. Like, when you graduate, you're going to be making around $50,000. Like, you're going to be $22,000 in debt if you take out 5500 So you could pay it off in no time. And um, in-state tuition is the last option. Because in-state tuition is cheaper for public schools. Like, I think UIC is... 18,000 for tuition? Does anyone want to go to UIC? 14? Around 14,000, which is not as expensive. I think. That's it. That's it. <laughs>